Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and this is the second video in a two-part series on how to add infrared sensors to your layout for detection. In the first video, I showed you how to build the sensor hub with an Arduino and we connected our first infrared sensor. In this second part, I'll show you how to use two of those infrared sensors to do basic automation of a train on a digital layout using JMRI. Again, the main benefit of using this system is the cost. It is significantly cheaper than any off-the-shelf option. Once you've built the sensor hub, which is less than £50, adding each additional sensor, and the sensor hub can take loads, will only cost you one or two pounds extra per sensor. If you were to do this with an off-the-shelf product, it would cost you hundreds. Again, there's no soldering involved. All the code is ready to be downloaded. So this is just a good way to demonstrate how you can easily add automation to your layout using these sensors. And it's what I use to control Little Wicket. If you find these videos useful, then please give me a like and a subscribe. And this is what you need to get started. A computer running JMRI. If you've already done part one, then this should already be set up. The sensor hub that you built in part one, a digital layout that you've connected to JMRI. If you want to know how to do this, then see my DCC++ base station build guide, and it will show you how you can use an Arduino as a digital base station to connect your layout to the JMRI system and control your trains from there. You'll need two infrared sensors. We're going to use one at both ends of the layout to um, detect where the train should stop. You're going to need two cables, as we discussed in part one, to connect your sensors to your sensor hub. In this video, I'm going to create a sensor gate, and to do that, I'm just going to use some blue tack and a reflective surface. Um, I'll show you more ways you can do that later on. And you're going to need a digital locomotive uh, that's already set up and ready to run a JMRI. Again, if you want to know how to do that, see my DCC++ base station video. A quick word on safety, you are working with electricity here, so take the usual precautions. Please disconnect the power when assembling everything and attaching your sensors to avoid any short circuits. And it's always a good idea to use a residual current device when connecting power supplies to the mains. As usual, I've broken this down into steps. They're all listed in the description below as clickable chapters. Not many in this one, so let's get started. This video assumes you've already done part one and done the center hub build. If you're looking at this and going, where on earth does this center hub come from? You need to go back and see that video. It'll explain how we put it all together, how it's all connected up and how it all works. In this first step, we're gonna connect the infrared sensors to the center hub and power it up. So first thing to do is decide on a color scheme for your cable so that everything is consistent. We've got light orange for the digital signal. We've got the darker color for the ground and we've got the red for the VCC or the um, three volt power supply. So we can start by taking our first infrared sensor and connecting the first cable just by slotting it on. Now remember, on the sensor hub, you can't use zero and one. So we need to start with number two. So that's what we're gonna plug it into. Again, keeping consistent with our color scheme. Then we can move on and do the exact same thing with our second infrared sensor. And we're gonna plug that into connection number three on the sensor hub. Then we can connect the USB connection on the center hub to your computer. And then we can connect the power supply to the center hub. You should know if that's all working because you'll get the lights on the sensors and they'll start to react if you move things in front of them. If that's all looking good, you're ready to move on to step two. So in this second step, we're going to build the sensor gate that's gonna detect when the train is passing through. The way we're gonna do it here is by putting the sensor on one side of the track and a reflective surface on the other side of the track. When the train passes through, it's gonna break that beam. JMRI will see that that beam has been broken and the sensor will be active. 
So all we're going to do is put a blob of blue tack on the bottom of the sensor and stick that on one side and a blob of blue tack on this piece of card that I've covered with aluminium foil. And that's going to go on the other side. And you should see that the beam is constantly on now. And if we were to put something between it, it should go off. Now you might be thinking this isn't a very attractive arrangement and this probably isn't how you would do it on your layout and there are actually a number of ways you can do it and I use most of them on a little wicket. So you can either use something like this and I do use it where the sensor is maybe poking out from under a platform, you've got a little reflective surface on the other side and it picks up when the train passes through because the beam's broken. If you don't want to use a reflective surface and you want a setup that's slightly more reliable, what you can do is desolder one of the LEDs, set the emitter up on one side of the track and the receiver up on the other side of the track so you've got a constant beam going from one LED to the other and again when the train comes through the beam is broken and the sensor is activated. Probably the most common way of doing this though and the reason for buying the 3mm LEDs is that they fit perfectly between double O gauge sleepers. So you can drill two small holes and position the sensor beneath the board. Then the idea is a train will pass overhead and the infrared beam will reflect off the underside of the locomotive and activate the sensor. The only problem with this is that the underside of most locomotives is black and black isn't a very good reflective surface. In fact, I struggled to get it to activate most of the sensors on my layout. So what I've had to do is put small pieces of aluminium tape on the underside of my locomotives and some of my wagons just to make sure that reflective surface is there and that the sensor is activated consistently every time the locomotive passes overhead. This is the most discreet way to add these sensors to your layout because you'll only see the two small holes between the sleepers where the LEDs are poking through the board. But for our little experiment here, our two sensors and the big bits of reflective card will do the trick just fine. As I'm sure you're aware, these digital trains come to a realistic stop. It's not an immediate thing. So you need to make sure when you position these sensors, you allow time for that train to slow down and come to a stop without running off the end or if this was going to be on your layout completely missing the platform. So you might need to play around with this once we've got it going to make sure they're in exactly the right place. So in this step we'll set up the sensors in JMRI and if you followed step one this should be really easy because we set up all 70 to start with. So hopefully now we've just plugged the sensors in they should be recognised by JMRI when we run the script. So the first thing we're going to do is go to panels, run script, go to the desktop again and run sensorscan.py. Once that's finished running, we'll go to tables and we'll go to sensors. And there are all the sensors that we set up earlier. Now, the system's detected that AR2 is active. That's good because that's the one we've plugged one of our sensors into. And it's detected that AR3 is also active. So because we're using a light gate, these are always going to be active until the beam is broken but we don't always want the sensor to be active. So what we can do is click this little box called inverted next to each one. That means when the sensor on the, on the layout is reading as active, JMRI will record the sensor as being inactive. So if I just put my hand between the sensor now, it's shown as inactive. And what you can see here is a good example of flickering. And it means that the sensor is sort of halfway between on and off. And you can either fix that by adjusting the bit of reflective card because it might not be um, accurately reading. The other thing you can do is adjust the potentiometer on the back of the sensors to make sure that they are always on when you want them on and off when you want them off. Once you've got your sensors arranged so that they're consistently showing what you want them to show, either by adjusting the potentiometer on the back or the angle of the reflective surface, you can go to default, global debounce delays, and this is where you tell it how long a sensor has to be inactive for for the um, JMRI to update the sensor within the software and how long it needs to be active for it to again update the sensor in the software. So what we want to do is set the global debounce delay to active as zero but we want it to wait for half a second, so this is in milliseconds, so we're going to put 500 in before it goes inactive and this just means that once it's gone active if it starts to flicker it, it won't show that on the um, JMRI software. So if we hit OK, the other thing we need to do on here is just go to Edit, 
and on debounce delays just use the global debounce delay hit apply on this one and hit apply on this one so this means you can either set them individually or you can set them um, to use the the global settings and that's your sensors ready to work with the script that we're going to download in the next step In this next step, we're going to download and modify the script that we're going to run in JMRI to control our train. You need to go to jmri.org, which you should be familiar with from part one. Scroll down until you get to the layout automation section on the left hand side and go to scripting. In here, there's lots of information about scripts and how they work. But for now, we just want to go to many other example scripts. In here are loads of example scripts that people have written to give you an idea of what you can achieve through scripting in JMRI. We want to scroll down and go to backandforth.py. Click on it and this is the script that we're going to need to run in JMRI. Highlight it all, copy it, open up Notepad, paste it into there and save it again I'm just going to put it on the desktop and you need to save it as back and forth dot py you can call it whatever you want as long as it ends in dot py and hit save now before we can run this there are a few changes we're going to make and it's useful for us to just run through the script together so all this at the top is commenting and it explains what's going on within the script so wherever you see a hash that's just a little comment to help you guide it guide you through what the script's trying to do. It's importing some libraries here. This is the main area where it's running the um, body of the script. The first thing we need to do is change the sensors. So here is where it's defining what the forward sensor is and the reverse sensor. So on as, um, the forward sensor was AR2 and the reverse sensor for when the train's going backwards is AR3. Three. And these are just the sensors per the sensor table in here, AR2 and AR3 under the username section. Next, we need to tell it which locomotive we're using. And here it's using the address of the locomotive from JMRI. So our train isn't on 14. I'm going to use my compound 4P, which is on address 10. And this is just from the roster within JMRI. So again, we need to change that to 10 and we'll just update the comment as well. And scroll down. So here, this is where it's working through the steps. So it's going to set the loco to forward. Then it's setting the speed and it's setting it to 70% here. And that's probably going to be a little bit too fast for my layout because my stopping distances are quite short. So we're going to change that to 40%. Here it's telling the uh, script to wait for the forward sensor to go active. And then once it goes active, it's telling the locomotive to stop, so setting the speed to zero. Then it's going to wait 20 seconds. That's a bit too long for us, so we're going to just change this to 10 seconds. Again, this wait uh, con command is in milliseconds, so we're going to change that to 10,000 milliseconds, wait for 10 seconds. Then it's being clever here, it assumes our locomotive has a sound decoder, and this will work whether your locomotive does or doesn't have a sound decoder, but it, here it's telling function 3 to true, which is turning on the whistle, then it's waiting a second, then turning it off again, then it's setting the locomotive into reverse, and again it's setting the speed to 70%, that's a bit too fast for us, so we're going to set that to 40, then it's saying wait for the reverse sensor, and when the reverse sensor goes active, so when the train breaks the beam on the right hand side, it's going to set the speed to zero. Then again, it's going to wait, we'll change this to 10 seconds, because 20 seconds is a bit too long. Oops. And again, it's going to sound the whistle just before it sets off, and it goes back to step one and continues the loop. If you want to stop this, you'd need to terminate the script within JMRI. So we just save that, and that's our script ready to be run. So now we're ready to run the script in JMRI. So the first thing we're going to do is turn the power on on the layout. Next, 
we're going to make sure we're running the sensor scan script. We're going to open the sensor table so that we can see what our sensors are doing. Then we're going to open a uh, script output. And now we're going to run the um, back and forth script. So here it's setting the low code to forward and setting the speed. And hopefully if all's going well, your train should start moving now. It's detected the train at that first sensor. It's going to wait 10 seconds, sound the horn and then set it into reverse. And our train should now be reversing. And hopefully, as it passes through that second sensor gate, it'll be detected, come to a stop, and go back to being forwards. And there it goes forwards again. And it will keep doing this for eternity. If you want to stop it, you can go to Thread Monitor and click on the Kill button. And you might need to go and open a throttle and just click stop on there as well and you can turn the power off thank you for watching hopefully your train is now happily running backwards and forwards on its own between two points on your layout have a look at the code Explore the example code on JMRI. You really are only limited by the number of sensors you can fit on the board, which is loads, and your imagination. If you found this video useful, then please give me a like and a subscribe, and I will hopefully see you again soon.